think that one of the most annoying, if not irritating, things about the Catholic faith is that as times change and things become more modernized, the rules stay the same in the Catholic Church. Annoying, if not irritating, that these rules stay the same despite the modern culture. And if you go anywhere else, you will find many churches on any of those varying degrees of leniency or compromise, except the Catholic Church. And so it becomes difficult for us when we think even about a new year, how am I going to live the Catholic faith better than I lived last year? But that presupposes that we're living the Catholic faith in the first place in order to get that back. And so as I think about these things and we celebrate Mary, the mother of God, the ultimate mother, and we think about the role of any mother to raise their child, we might look at Mary and we'd say, well, she didn't have to deal with the issues that we have to deal with in this age. If Mary was the mother of Jesus in this 21st century, well, things would be different because they don't have those things happening 2,000 years ago. So we might look at, at something like euthanasia, you know, mercy killing to a certain extent, or assisted suicide to a certain extent. And we'd say, well, they didn't have to deal with those end-of-life issues. They certainly did. If you look at the popular Roman culture, in fact, it was dignified for a Roman to end their own life as opposed to becoming a burden for their family. I mean, this was seen as almost heroic. So how would she have combated this when they talk about civil unions? Civil unions were not only permitted in Rome, they were promoted in Rome. And in fact, if you read Epictetus, he actually talks about an episode where Nero married two different people in that way. And it was popular. It was promoted. How would she have responded to that if he saw that in this day and age? Well, they didn't have plagues like we have these days, and sickness and disease. Why do we think that the mortality rate of the age was so low? They had terrible diseases and plagues back then. They certainly didn't have antibiotics. So a plague for them could be the common cold. I mean, they could have died from different flu-like symptoms or whatever else. They didn't have immunizations like we do. And we'd say, well, at least, you know, they didn't have the news media like we do. It's no longer reporting, but it's trying to shape us in some way, whether for, you know, conservative or liberal or whatever. On the contrary, every regime had their minister of communication or their minister of propaganda. And it was that minister that was so important for getting acceptance of the regime. Well, you know, what about these other issues? We didn't have, uh, you know, the, the world uh, global society and all this. We had a little bit of that in their own little world. Well, we didn't have global warming. We didn't have uh, carbon emissions and all these things that we're dealing with. No, they had droughts and famines. And they had the rainy season and the dry season. And they had earthquakes and volcanoes. All these things they had back then. Well, they didn't have to deal with abortion. On the contrary, abortion was so rampant back then that the apostles in their teachings actually have a rule against it. I mean, they explicitly say, you cannot abort your child. I mean, this is 2,000 years ago. They didn't have the technology we have. And they're saying that. And so when we look at our day and age and say, well, she was the perfect mother because she didn't have to deal with all these modern issues, we come to discover and we read some of the ancient documents that this is not modern issues at all. It's from antiquity. It was ever thus. The only difference is, and this happened with the Israelites, that religions began to confirm, conform to the popular culture that they changed their rules to suit their neighborhood because the rules were at best annoying or irrational or inherited. And usually, this change in their religion in compromising to be alongside the culture always preceded some kind of exile. They always went into exile. 
and then they always came back and said, let's reform our ways and go back to the original covenant. It always goes back to the original. And so as we look at this, and we think of Mary, imagine Mary now, a young mother, raising Jesus in that climate. And he would be exposed to these things. I mean, they were oppressed by the Romans. The Roman culture was there. And the Jews themselves were mixing with that culture. What would Mary have said to Jesus about that? She would not have offered her. She would have said that it's right. See, Mary was born without original sin. But she was not born without temptation. And she must have been tempted very often to try to be polite to people who were obviously living a lifestyle that they should be. That her first priority was her son and to raise her son. Now, once her son was grown, I mean, she did the best she could to raise her kid. The way he went from there, well, that was his team. He grew up. But the fact is, he was not asked to be successful. She was asked to try. Do the best she could to raise her son. Now, there are places in the scripture where you'll see Jesus' mother and his brothers were outside. And Jesus says, my mother and brother are the ones who hear the word of God and live it. It's not that he's down to your mother there, but he's saying, listen, if you want to be a brother or sister or a mother of mine, that means you cannot compromise. At another place it says his mother and his brothers are outside. And they are saying he is out of his mind. He is a little bit and the reason they're saying this is you can imagine a mother looking at her son and saying these things that make people want to kill him. Saying things that are not comfortable. Saying things that are ruffling feathers. You can imagine she'd say, son, can you just soften it a little bit? Can you just be a little more PC about the way you explain this? And she did it out of her mother's life. And so there's this old cliche, WWJD, what would Jesus do? And we'd say, I can't do that, because Jesus is God, okay? That's way beyond us. WWJD is impossible for me. And you know, so let's, let's put it into realistic terms, because, you know, a cop out would be, well, he's God, I'm not God, I can't do that. WWMD. What would Mary do? We have to be careful here. Because as Catholics, we already have a reputation of worshiping Mary. However, if we say, what would Mary do? We're saying that because she is totally human. And so there can't be a cop out there. What would Mary do? She's one of us. She's one like us, which is the reason why, you know, we kind of offer a mass in her honor today. We venerate her as the mother of God. What would Mary do? Despite the discomfort, despite the condition that she was in to begin with, something that she didn't ask for, but she said yes. What would Mary do? Mary would do not what was best for Mary, but what was best for God. And we can look at that and we can say, well, she didn't live in the climate that we live in today. She did. She lived in a climate that was very similar, if not worse, in some aspects than we live today. And the woman is a saint. She's the greatest of saints. Not because she was perfect. Not because she was necessarily successful. But because she tried. You ever have, you know, you might have a little child and they're playing a game and they start to lose the game so they change the rules. Sometimes adults do that too, by the way. That's not what we can do here. That's the annoying thing about the Catholic Church. If we don't like the rules, we can't change them. And so we cannot adapt an ideology to our lifestyle. We have to adapt our lifestyle to a faith that's much bigger than we are. That sounds like a New Year resolution. And that's where it starts. As opposed to a resolution, which is something we're doing again, a re-solution. Let's make it the solution. As we look at all those resolutions that we've made, and maybe we even succeeded at some, we have to ask the question, how did that bring you closer to God? 
How does that make me more faithful in my call as a Catholic Christian? Or have I changed the rules to the game again and again just so I feel okay about this? I don't know about you, but if I have cancer, I don't want the doctor who's going to make me feel good about my cancer. I want the doctor who's going to find and remove that cancer. Despite what suffering you have made today. And I am by no means preaching to you as one of the prophets. I am with you in the views that I preach first to myself. But as we celebrate the Blessed Virgin Mary, as we celebrate this new year, we ask the question this year, this is a great resolution to think about. When I enter into my life, and my relationships, and my work, and my prayer, and my exercise, my recreation, whatever I do, WWM.